again, everybody. Yes, he's Hallelujah. Ready. Hallelujah. So let's try some more. Hallelujah. To just oh, magnify hallelujah. this great God. Yes, he's holy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
just worship the Lord. Ooh, he is awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
When clothed in his brightness Transported I ride Meet him When you meet him in clouds of the sky His for me. necessarily now a public testimony this is the testimony that my heart gives of the Lord to my own self how wonderful Savior is Jesus a wonderful Savior to me your heart make an expression to Jesus all across this room let's lift our hands and worship the Lord hallelujah 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 this world is like a dry, thirsty land. Are you feeling cleft this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just spend a few more seconds and just worship Him. 
Let's express ourselves to him. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to pray this morning. We have received several prayer requests. They have already been distributed. I wonder if you could just turn to the person on your right and agree with them to pray this morning. Agree with them to pray. And agree with them to be cleft this morning. We're going to pray that the presence of the Lord will continue to lead our service. That the Lord will have his own way in every facet of this morning's service. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's agree to be cleft this morning. Let's cry out to the Lord right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. We praise your wonderful name. You are the ever fresh scented rose. Hallelujah. 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 We're so unworthy this morning, Lord, as we come into your banqueting house and your banner over us is love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, this world is a dry and thirsty land and we must be cleft in the rock. Hallelujah. Hide us behind the cross this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we come with all our needs this morning, Jesus. And we want to put them before you. Spiritual needs. Oh, God, financial needs, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Personal needs. Needs to be healed and to be touched by you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But before we present these needs, God, we want to give ourselves to you. Oh God, we want to seek your face this morning and not just your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will walk through the pews this morning. You will walk, oh God, on this platform. You will touch the musicians, the song technicians, the choir every facet of the service everyone that will oh god hear the sound from this microphone this morning jesus 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 god for our children's church and teen tab we pray this morning that your presence will be there god almighty breathe upon us this morning lord as only you can i pray that every visitor that walked through these build this building this morning that they will not leave the same way they came, Lord God Almighty. But, oh God, they will be transformed. They will be changed, dear God. They will have a new experience with you. They will make that all-important decision to give themselves to you, God, and to walk in your path. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, touch every child that will be blessed this morning. Jesus, breathe upon us this morning, God, our good leaders. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hear our prayers this morning, Lord. Allow our cry to come unto you, Jesus. Help us, Lord, not to just come for this Sunday, but to make this Sunday happen. Help us to bring our minds here, God Almighty. Help us to bring our thoughts here, Jesus. And help us to bring our thoughts into subjection to the will of Christ. Lord, cover this place this morning. Be an, almost a canopy over this place, Jesus. Dispel every thought, O oh God Almighty, that is not of you this morning. Walk in our midst. Fill our hearts this morning, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your perfect way, Lord. And at the end of this service, Lord Jesus, let us all be able to say, God, it was good for us to have been here, to feel your presence, 
to invite you to be comfortable in our hearts and in our minds. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Amen. He's a very present help in trouble. Amen. He knoweth them that trusteth in him. Amen. He will arise and deliver. Come on, folks. Let's worship him. My, my, my. Psalmist said, this God is our God, this God. There's a sense in which Jesus is not the only God, but he's the true God. All other gods are liars. He's a living God. All other gods are dead. He's the only wise God. All other gods are fools. Lift your hands and worship Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We're going to be turning to the word of the Lord. We're reading today from first epistle of Peter. First Peter chapter 2, and we are going to read, as we normally do, responsively from the King James Version. Then we'll consider the Message Version. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, have you found it? Amen. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'd like us to read verse 10 again, please. Mercy, 
That's us, you know, brethren. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For even here unto where we called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. For ye were a sheep going astray. Together, let's read. For ye were a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop. I'm glad Jesus is the true bishop and the true shepherd. I have to be careful of some of the bishops going around. All right, let's consider the message now. I think this might come on the screen. I'll just read. It's quite something. So clean house. Make a clean sweep of malice and pretense. Envy and hurtful talk. You've had a taste of God. Now like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness. Then you will grow up mature and whole in God. Welcome to the living stone, the source of life. The workmen took one look and threw it out. God set it in the place of honor. Present yourselves as building stones for the construction of a sanctuary. Vibrant with life. In which you will serve as holy priests. Offering Christ approved lives up to God. The scriptures provide precedent. Look, I'm setting a stone in Zion. A cornerstone in the place of honor. Whoever trusts in this stone as a foundation will never have cause to regret it. So you who trust, to you who trust him, he's a stone to be proud of. But to those who refuse to trust him, the stone the workmen threw out is now the chief foundation stone. For the untrusting, it's a stone to trip over, a boulder blocking the way. They trip and fall because they refuse to obey, just as predicted. 
But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. From nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. Friends, this world is not your home. So don't make yourselves cozy in it. Don't indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. Live an exemplary life among the natives so that your actions will refute their prejudices. They'll be won over to God's side and be there to join in the celebration when he arrives. Make the master proud of you by being good citizens. Respect the authorities, whatever their level. They are God's emissaries for keeping order. It is God's will that by doing good, you might cure the ignorance of the fools who think you are a danger to society. Heard that, folks? It is God's will that by doing good, you might cure the ignorance of the fools who think you are a danger to society. There are some persons who are fools who believe that Christians are a danger to society. And we don't cure that by pleading the blood. We cure that by giving an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. We cure that by paying our bills. We cure that by living right, not by shouting hallelujah. We shout hallelujah in church. But we mustn't shout hallelujah when the conductor comes and asks us for our fear and tell him that Jesus paid it all. If you don't have the fear, before you go in the bus, ask for a ride. Exercise your freedom by serving God, not by breaking the rules. Treat everyone you meet with dignity. Love your spiritual family. Revere God. Respect the government. You who are servants, be good servants to your masters. Not just to good masters, but also to bad ones. That's what the Bible says. Tell your neighbor, that's what the Bible says. What counts is that you put up with it for God's sake. When you're treated badly for no good reason. There's no particular virtue in accepting punishment that you well deserve. But if you're treated badly for good behavior. And continue in spite of it to be a good servant. That is what comes with God. This is the kind of life you've been invited into. The kind of life Christ lived. He suffered everything that came his way so you would know that it could be done and also know how to do it step by step. He never did one thing wrong. Never once said anything amiss. They called him every name in the book and he said nothing back. He suffered in silence, content to let God set things right. He used his servant body to carry our sins to the cross so we could be rid of sin, free to live the right way. His wounds became your healing. You were lost sheep with no idea who you were or where you were going. Now you are named and kept for good. By the shepherd of your souls. Isn't that wonderful? 
Let's lift our hands and thank God for his word. Amen. Just before you're seated, I want to tell you this while you're standing. Uh, most of us know that Minister Paul Walters has been in and out of the hospital. You know, he's been scheduled for surgery at least three times and then sent home because something wasn't ready. You wouldn't like to be in that position, would you? Well, now he's been asked to come back on Thursday for surgery. But he needs some blood. And he needs own negative blood. That's the only blood that he can use. So although we have given blood, that's a rare type of blood. And so that's the blood he needs. So if there is anyone here today, if you have own negative blood, and you can help by donating a unit of blood, we beg of you to go up to the university hospital, to the uh, blood unit there, and give a unit of blood for Brother Walters. If your blood is not O negative, then don't go. It wouldn't make any sense. It has to be O negative blood. Amen, everybody? Anybody has that type of blood, O negative? I have O positive. And nobody? Oh, one person. Oh, other persons. Well, if you can, brethren, if you can, if you can, please, we would be so grateful if you would. Thank you so much. Now just walk around and greet several people very warmly. Don't just stay in your seat. Move around a little. Some of you sit down so quickly. Did you greet a lot of people? You just smile with somebody please just smile with them is there anybody you can smile with just let them know you're happy that they're here today amen just before sister Marsha Powell comes to give us our official welcome and to tell us what's on the agenda here for the next week or so. I published the bands of marriage between Winston Wright Edwards and Anne-Marie Willis, both of the parish of St. Andrew. If anyone knows cause or just impediment, why these two persons may not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye ought to declare it or forever hereafter hold your peace. Praise the Lord, Sister Marsha. Grace and peace to you, everybody. Uh, could all our visitors be so kind enough to stand for us? Thank you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. On behalf of Pastor Bartlett and the saints of
Pentecostal Tabernacle would like to extend a warm greeting to you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for choosing here to worship the Lord. And we pray that you leave here with a blessing in your heart. Uh, those who are sitting close by, could you give them a warm hug? Thank you so much. You may be seated. Uh, please be so kind enough to listen to the schedule of announcements for this coming week. This evening at 6.45, we have our evening service in the sanctuary. There is nothing on for tomorrow. On Tuesday, our youth service will be supporting uh, the youth week at Pentab Waterhouse. And there is a bus that will leave here at 5.45 to, on Tuesday. On Wednesday, at 6.30 a.m. is morning manor. 9 o'clock, Pentab High School student service. At 11.45, fasting service. At 3 p.m., student service. And at 6.30 p.m., uh, prayer and Bible study. Praise the Lord. On Thursday, at 6 p.m., is finance committee meeting. At 6.30, pastoral assistance meeting in Pastor Bartlett's office. 7 p.m. meeting of the Women's Fellowship Presidents of Region 1 here at Pentab. On Friday at 6.30 p.m., everyone is asked to support the Youth Week at Pentab Waterhouse, and persons are being asked to make their own arrangements where transportation is concerned. On Sunday, that's March 3, 6 a.m. Right to Divide in the Word on RGR Fame FM, 7 a.m. Prayer Time in the Sanctuary, 8 a.m. Pre Session, 8.30 a.m. Operation Invasion in Nineville Community. And everybody say, Praise the Lord. Good. At 6.45 p.m., we have evening service. Junior Bible Quiz begins this Wednesday, February 27, at 5.15 p.m., in the Ralph and Helen Reynolds Hall. All persons who have not yet registered for this program are being asked to do so today, with today Sunday, and you may collect the study verses along with the registration sheet at the foyer next to the nursery over by the administrative building. For further information, please contact Sister Melissa Richards as soon as possible. UPCJ's first citywide crusade for 2013 will be held in Region 2 at the Helsha Park Shopping Center, Helsha Park, Portmore, St. Catherine, on Sunday, March 3, 2013, and this will begin at 6 p.m. Stretch, S-T-R-E-T-C-H, Ministry's Second Parish Hop, is scheduled for Saturday, March 9, 2013. The group will picnic and visit landmarks in St. Elizabeth and Manchester. Transportation and entry cost is $1,500 per person. Please take your lunches and contact sisters Sandra Allen and Judine Clark for further details. Some upcoming events on March 4, Men's and Women's Fellowship General Meetings, March 9, Stretch Parish Hop, March 12 to 22, our 10 day fast. Members of this 26 to 39 year Sunday school are being asked to meet under the almond tree after the altar service today. And our Bible reading, we, are, we should be at Genesis 4 to 9 today. And by next week, Sunday, Lord willing, we should be at Exodus 6. Thank you so much. God bless you and have a God-filled week. Oh, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Uh, how many heard the announcements? How many can remember what's happening here? Can remember what's happening on Wednesday? Yes? Bible study on Wednesday, is that right? Yes, and I wonder what we are going to do with what we heard. Oh my, I do hope we'll come on Wednesday for Bible study. And on Sunday, what are we doing on Sunday? 
We're going to be meeting here at the sanctuary for prayer at 8.30. And then we're going to go up to Nannyville Gardens. Now, brethren, we have a responsibility to support our daughter work in Nannyville. They are coming under pressure, and uh, it wouldn't be right for us just to stay here and not give them support. So, I know that some of us are... Uh, it's, Change is not easy for any of us. But um, I'm going to ask you to pray through on this. We need to flood that community and let them know that there's a church that cares. Amen? It's very important that we do that. We can't just talk about incarnation. We can't just talk about love. We've got to put it in action. And it's not easy to put it in action. It's tough to live a life of incarnation. But those folks need us now. And uh, we can't go there in the evening. We have to go there in the day. Because there's a lockdown at 6 o'clock. So we can't have a street meeting there. We have to have a house meeting while we can. And there's no telling when that lockdown will be lifted. They have said three months in the first instance. It could be longer. So I'd like for you to pray through on that, brethren, and come. Just wear a comfortable pair of shoes and come and let's worship God in doing the will of God. Amen? Amen, everybody? Amen. Amen. If you are afraid, or if you are at death's door, weak and feeble, we understand that. We will have service here for those who are in that category. If you're not in that category and you stay, you will be beaten with many stripes. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. You know, folks, that when Israel went to war, the high priest and the other leaders, when Israel gathered, they were to say, all those who have married a wife and have not, um, you know, if you haven't consummated the marriage, go home. Because you might die. And it wouldn't be right for you to die just like that. And they would say, if you are afraid... Go home because we wouldn't want you to put fear into the other fighting men. So you go home. And then a charge would be given to those who stay. And then they would go and fight. Amen? So we just have to do that, brethren. And we understand that not everybody is the same. All right? Now we're going to be dedicating some babies before we receive the offering. We're going to be praying for them. And like I always say, the names are getting more and more exotic. And uh, we may make mistakes as we call them. But I hope that the parents will forgive us. So we're going to call the names of these precious young children, babies, and ask the parents to bring them as we call the names. Dominic, Gita Meyer, Dinzel Edwards, Fabriana, Renee Foster, Marshane, Jason Henry, 
Okila, Kayla, Isaac, Quiana, Kalila, Schliefer, Antoine, Javon Scott. Praise the Lord. When I first used to do infant dedications, we heard Susan, Catherine, John, Andrew, Peter. But now it is different. Thank God for change. Amen. Thank God for change. I think some of the parents are trying to give the new name that we'll get in that sunny land before we get there. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his love and his own oh, like the stars of the morning his right crown adorning they shall shine in their beauty bright gems for his crown we'd like to invite other family members of these babies here you're welcome to come and stand with your Relative. Little children, little children who love their Redeemer are the jewels, precious jewels, his loved and his own. Glenton Wallace will be taking us through the process. Praise the Lord, everyone. To ask Brother Graham to read the appropriate scripture. Let's all stand for the reading of the word. Thank you. Our scripture verse is taken from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, reading verse 13 to verse 16. And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Thank you, Brother Graham. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Oh Lord, you are our God. We thank you, Lord, for your great love to us. We magnify you today, Lord, because from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You are our creator, Lord. You are our savior. You are our keeper. You are our friend, Lord. You are our only hope. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us the privilege to be here on this occasion. And Lord, this moment, we present to you these children that are standing in your presence at this time. My God, I thank you, Lord, for the parents. Thank you, Lord, for the mothers that you have been merciful to them. Lord, in keeping them over these months, oh God, of pregnancy, and granting them a safe delivery, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for these children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies to them thus far. And today, O oh God, we present them into your hands. Realize, O oh God, at this moment, they are weak, 
and vulnerable to many things. But Lord, I pray today that your protecting hand will always be upon them from this day forward, Lord Jesus. Protect them as they grow up, Lord, and move around their homes and surroundings, Lord. Keep them, oh God, from all danger. Hallelujah. Oh God, guide your footsteps, Lord, as they grow up and go to school. Be with them, Lord Jesus. Protect them on the road. Protect them as they drive. Protect them wherever they are, Lord God. Hallelujah. They need you. Oh, Jesus. You see the society we are living in, oh God. We have so many dangers are around. But be with them. And as they grow up, Lord, the most important thing, Lord, help them to come to know you, Lord, at a very early age. Oh, God. Help them, Lord Jesus, to grow up knowing you and walking with you. And when they reach the age of accountability, they'll totally surrender their lives to you, my God. That they will repent of their sins, be baptized in your name, and be filled with your spirit and walk with you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll provide for them the things that they need from day to day. They'll need food to eat, Lord Help them, Lord, that they'll never be hungry, Lord, but they'll always have food to eat. Lord, they'll have clothes to wear. They'll have a place to live, oh God. So, Lord, provide for the parents, my God, that they can provide for them. Lord Jesus, I pray that you help these parents, Lord, to realize the great responsibility that they have, my God, to lead them and to guide them and to protect them and to grow them, Lord, in your fear. So, Lord, I pray that you'll help them, Lord, that they'll take them to your house, my God, where they'll learn to worship you and learn your words and learn how to walk with you, my God. Lord, this is the most important thing in their lives, that they'll walk with you. So, Lord, Lord, help the parents, oh God, to do their part, my God. Help them, Lord, to excel in life, Lord Jesus. That's cool, oh God. They grow up to work. Whatever they do, let them be a blessing, my God. Let them they be a blessing to others, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, so I pray today that you'll keep them close to you. Take their lives. And let their lives be totally consecrated to you, my God. We are depend upon you today, Lord Jesus, as we ask these mercies in your great and wonderful name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He will gather, He will gather the gems for His kingdom. All the pure ones, all the bright ones, His loved and His own. Or like the stars of the morning. Bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Yes, like the stars of the morning, his bright crown Lord everyone praise the Lord everyone praise the Lord praise the Lord amen we're going to ask our ushers to come we want to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Joseph March from Bronx New York and Sister Marsh is the mother of Sister Jean Williams, so the mother-in-law of Deacon Williams. Where are these precious people? Would you stand please so we can see you? Oh, wonderful. Let us clap our hands and welcome them. Thank you so very much for coming today. 
May the Lord richly bless you. Let's all stand. Thank you so much for coming today. And may the Lord richly bless you. Amen. We're going to be giving back to the Lord some of what he has given to us. What a wonderful God we serve, you folks. What a God we serve. Who you know would ask you for an offering and then give you the offering to give them. We wish if our government would do that to us. Oh my, what happy people we would be, eh? Oh my, what a God we serve. He gives us everything and says, just give me a portion. Huh? Wow, what a wonderful God. Let's lift our hands and thank our God for being so good. Remember, brethren, that this evening in our service, we're going to be praying specially for our children in school. We're going to be anointing them and praying for them. I just believe that the devil is after our children. And parents, I want you to bring them out. We want to cover them. Pray for them in the name of the Lord. We're not doing anything symbolic. We want to invoke the name of the Lord over them. Amen. And ask the Holy Ghost to watch over them. And to keep them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So please bring them out. Would you bow your heads? Lord Jesus, we give today... Because we love you. Nobody is pressuring us. Nobody is holding a gun to our heads. We love you. And Lord, we're not sure how much longer we will have to live. This might be my last Sunday in your house. I plan to come back tonight, Lord, but... Only you know if I will. Maybe between the close of this service today and the beginning of the evening service, some of us may be ushered into eternity. Or you might come and then there would be no point in a service. Help us, Lord, to live each day. You try to tell us in your word that it is the days that matter. We tend to celebrate years. We celebrate anniversaries and birthdays every year. But your word says, teach me to number my days. Your word says, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Your word says, give us this day our daily bread. Help us to live each day for you. And each day will amount into years. Bless the offering that we will receive now. And help us to use it for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Rosemary is leading us in worship as we march today with our offerings. The ushers will direct us. You may be seated. How great is our God. How great is his name. He is the greatest one. Forever the same, he rolled back the water from the mighty red sea. He said, I need you, won't you trust in me? How great is your God, how great is his name, he is the greatest one forever the same. Oh, 
going to be leaving us? Yes. Yes, they are leaving us. Pastor Robert Stewart from Pentab of North Miami has invited them to minister there next week. This week. And so they are going to be there this week and on next Sunday. So, I haven't received any travel forms, many of them. So, 
So I'm hoping that by now and tonight, I'll be getting some travel forms. But uh, not all of them are going. And don't worry. We'll be all right. Now, brethren, next Sunday night, we are not going to be having a service here. Uh, the citywide crusade is being held in Hellshire. And so that's pretty close. And I think we need to support that with everything we have. Amen. So we're going to be all going. We're going to arrange for buses to come and to take those of us who desire to make use of buses to go. And uh, so we want you to know that. So next week, Sunday is a Sunday coming is a big Sunday for us. We're going to Nannyville, and we're going to Hellshire. So it's a going Sunday. All right? Remember what we said about the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is dead because it receives but doesn't give. So it's dead. There's no life in the Dead Sea because it just receives from the River Jordan. But it's an enclosed lake at the bottom end. It doesn't give anything out. So the water just stays there and stagnates. But a going church will always be a growing church. Amen. And uh, God hasn't called us to sit down every Sunday, brethren. He's called us to go. And we are unrepentant about that. We're not even apologizing. If you are a member of Pentecostal Tabernacle, you have to be flexible. There will be Sundays when we just go. And we'll just tell you a week in advance to wear a flat pair of shoes. Praise the Lord. I'd like for us to pray for the choir and our musicians who are going. Choir and musicians, would you just stand? I believe some of our sound technicians might be going to. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brethren, would you stand with us? And just we we choir knows Brother Cranston is very diligent to point this out to them that they are not performers. They are ministers. They, are, they know they are not going to show themselves. They're going to bring glory to God. So that's why we're praying for them right now. Amen. And no doubt some of them will use the opportunity to do a little sightseeing. Maybe a little shopping. And so on. But they are going to glorify God. And let's pray that God will make them a blessing. So just stretch your right hand forward. And let's all pray for them now in the name of the Lord. Let's all say in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Don't sit. We're very happy. Very happy today to have with us our very good friends. Amen. Pastor Errol Holness and his dear wife, Sister Patricia Holness. Uh, we share great friendship and fellowship as you know 
and uh, they're going to be ministering to us today and uh, we just want for the will of the Lord to be done amen we have been praying for them and uh, the Lord has been helping them and we will continue to pray for them and support them and uh, I'm going to invite them to come at this time uh, pastor will I guess just lead from here but as they come I want you to just lift your hands and worship the Lord come on everybody let's just worship the Lord this presence that we are feeling has nothing to do with us it's just the mercy of God we don't even deserve to call his name in our mouths but so merciful is he Hallelujah. The Lord bless you everyone. God bless you. There is no God like our God. There is no God but Jehovah. There is no God but Jehovah. The others are imitations. There is no God but the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor him this morning. We honor his name. We bless him and uh, just worship him. I am so happy to be here again, and we are so happy to be here. And uh, we love you. We love you, Pastor. We love you. I, I don't. I stop telling lies. I, I I love you, and I love this place, and I love God's people, and I know you care for us, and we appreciate you. And so, Sister Holness and myself are here just to share fellowship with you all this morning and to with God's help pass a word along so you pray for us and I'm gonna ask you kindly to be seated and I ask Sister Holness to make her expressions and then I'll follow after. All hail King Jesus All hail Emmanuel King of Kings and Lord of Lords Bright morning star, all hail the one who took our sins away. All hail the one who clothed us in righteousness. Hallelujah. Oh, the presence of the Lord has been so rich in the house. Mm. My, my, my frame cannot contain how I feel. Glory to God. But God has some favor to show to some people today. But I'd love to just dedicate this song to those who are hurting, those who are happy, those who are blessed, those who are rich, those who are poor, those who are sick, those who are sad, those who have lost the love they once had. Many years I longed for rest, perfect peace within my breast. And I often sought the Lord alone in tears, but I would not pay the price, I would not make the sacrifice. So I wandered on and on for many years. Let me lose myself and find it, Lord, in Thee. Cost me grief and pain. 
myself I'll find it Lord in thee then one day while bowed in prayer Jesus whispered to me there take my cross and follow me to Calvary oh how high Now the blood has been applied All myself is crucified Let me lead, dear Lord At least one soul to be Lord, I give myself away to greet you in Jesus name and your wonderful pastor and his wife and all you ministers and everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus it's such a privilege to be here such an honor to be in Pentab you are family to us we love you may God bless you as you listen to the words of God through our pastor Errol Anthony Holness in Jesus name Let us pray, O oh, Father, who art in heaven and whose presence fills this place. We honor you today, dear Lord.
we bless you. You are our God. You are our God. From everlasting to our God, this afternoon you are still God. Lord, I stand before your people, recognizing my own inadequacies and insufficiencies, but recognizing that all of my help comes from you. Lord, exclusively for the glory of your name, not for any glory to me or anybody else, but exclusively for the glory of your great name. I ask for anointing. I ask, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will envelop this congregation this afternoon. Take charge and bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, the Lord bless you again and... I can't tell you how very honored I feel to be with you here. Indeed, to be with God's people wherever they are. I love the Lord Jesus. I love the Lord Jesus. Church is everything to me. Church is my whole life. And... I, I just bless the Lord this afternoon. My heart is filled, you see, friends, because I stand here in Pentab this afternoon. God willing, I will be at our church next week. But after that, I'm not too sure where our church will be worshiping. And so, I ask you to pray for us. We're going through a particularly difficult period, but we serve a God Amen. who rules in the affairs of men. So, I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm looking for your prayers. And we know God is going to work. We know God is working. And we know God has worked it out already. But, you know, as a human being, you kind of feel away sometimes. And so, I just wanted to make that little preamble. God bless you. I'd like to share with you a few thoughts from the Word of God found in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. We're reading verses 10 to 12. Verse 10 says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into, which things the angels desire to look into. And can it be that I should gain an interest in my Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain for me? to death 
it pursues amazing love how can it be that I my God should stand for me amazing love how can essential contradictions here two essential contradictions here that God should die God can't die but God positioned himself so to speak to die one contradiction the second contradiction is that God should die for me Is that God should pay such a price for me. If you are buying something at a great price. You make sure that there is some equality between 
price and that which is being purchased. But here is a contradiction of economics, so to speak, that such a price is being paid for such worthlessness. That the Almighty God has positioned himself that you and you and more so me can claim a bold approach. Hallelujah. You see, friends, apostolic people must be thinking people. I, I am kind of tired of the excessive emotionalism with nothing behind it. But we serve a God who wants us to think, who wants us to be intelligent people. And try to reason it out if you could. You know where you are coming from. You know who you were. You know who you are now. You know what made that difference. Hikomasha. How can it be. That God over here so. Could meet me over here so. Could bridge the gap between my insufficiencies and inadequacies, my sinfulness, and claim me for himself. Amazing love. Amazing love. Amazing love. Amazing love. It amazes you the more you think of where we're coming from. It amazes you the more in when we think of some of the things we could be doing this Sunday morning. It amazes you more when you think of some of where our erstwhile friends are. But God. But God. But God. But God. The passage I read speaks to the prophets, holy men of old, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Sensed that something exceptional is about to happen. Throughout human history, after the fall, various attempts have been made to bridge that gap between God and man. Attempts on God's part, not attempts on man's part. And so various Mechanisms are put in place. Turtle doves and lambs. Various kinds of offerings to pacify the wrath of God. Justly deserved by mankind. And history is replete with the shedding of blood. Now, if you have ever smelled blood after a little while it stinks the Jewish altars I believe were not pleasant places the smell of blood the smell of animal blood sacrifices and year in year out these attempts are made and for a little while they seem to work but then our human propensities kick in again and we start to do the same things again and worse and God sits down in heaven and God in mercy looks down on mankind attempting to bridge that gulf between himself and God between humanity and God so annually these sacrifices are made and the high priest goes in and you better tie something onto him because if he's unclean in there we pull him out back his body I bring to you brothers and sisters a thought for your consideration that in all that is happening 
the angels are looking on. The angels are seeing these various attempts to make peace with God. The angels are seeing the love of God reaching out to mankind. The angels are seeing, the angels themselves are deployed on various missions to earth as mediums it were, as it were between God and mankind. So we have an angel in the time of Manoah, that's Samson's father, an angel sent down from God to talk to them. We have angels, an angel being sent down to comfort Daniel. We have angels on various missions. It culminates in Gabriel coming down to a virgin girl in Judea to advise her that something unusual is about to happen. And I want us to look at the whole thing from the perspective of angels as we try to appreciate and understand the love of God for us. It's an amazing love. It defies logic. It defies human understanding. It defies anything that you can calculate or reckon out. It, God's love makes no sense. God's love makes no sense in terms of human logic and being able to reason it out and say, well, we did so and so, and because my wife is attractive in my eyes, I love her. But we were unattractive, dirty, filthy, reprobate, depraved in God's sight. And God loves us so much that he comes down to our level to bring us. And the angels desire to understand what is it that God is doing. And the angels desire. The, the, the reading in my Bible note says that the angels stoop down. The angels bend over to inquire. What is it that God is doing? What is it that God is trying to accomplish in coming down here as a man to save some people who don't love him? What is it the angels are inquiring? The angels are, are, are seeking to... There is something about curiosity. There is something about... I'm tempted to use another word, another phrase. In, we, we, instead of saying curiosity, in Jamaica we say a farce. And I, I think of Moses passing the burning bush. And he's going about some other business, but he sees the bush... The fire. But he, he realizes that something unusual is happening. The, the bush isn't burning. And curiosity gets the better of him and he turns and God deals with him. Curiosity is getting the better of the angels. They are wondering. They know that God is omniscient. They know that God knows who these people are. They know, they see the attempts they see us as we sin. They saw mankind sinning and sinning and sinning and more sin. And they are looking on and they are seeing God getting more and more interested and concerned about these people who don't love him. And the angels desire to understand it. The angels are getting curious. The angels are getting concerned. Hallelujah. The angels are... are, are, are you, you see, friends, when, when I speak, you see, I'm a kind of little unconventional. So bear with me. And very simplistic. Very, very, very simplistic in my approach. But so to speak, the angels huddle in conference. And Gabriel and Michael and the rest of them, maybe they, they, they say, and, and just, just my little way of putting it, maybe they are saying, 
But Gabriel, is what God doing? God don't know who these people are. God don't understand that these people don't love him. God don't understand that if he goes down here, there, they're going to kill him. Hallelujah. God don't understand that if he goes down there, they're going to spit in his face. And they inquire. They're, 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 they're confused, so to speak. They're, they're seeking to understand the measure of God's love for you, for me, that God should come down here to die for us, friends. And they seek to understand. Amazing love. Oh, God love them so much. Oh, God find that one. In a room bar. Oh, God found that prostitute. Oh, God could go after that old drunkard. Oh, God could be reaching out after that old bad word cursor. That old ganja smoker. That old coke. That old womanizer. That old homosexual. That old lesbian. Hallelujah. And God is reaching after them. And the angels are wondering. What in heaven is God doing on earth? What in heaven is God doing on earth? God, you must have more sense than that. What you're doing among these people? The angels inquire and they seek diligently. The prophets realize that something extraordinary is about to happen. And they made various predictions, but not in their time. But in his own time, God became man. And God went on the cross in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ to shed blood. And somehow it found a little country boy. Hallelujah. Somehow it found you. I don't know where you come from this morning. But God's love. Hallelujah. Found you. And the angels stand in amazement. With their jaws open so to speak. And they wonder at the greatness of God's love. How God could reach out to you. Reach out to me. Brothers and sisters, angels can't understand it. I can't understand it, but I love Jesus. There are some things I can't understand, but I accept it as a given. Maths was not my best subject at school by any stretch of the imagination. But I had to accept that one I want to make too. <laughs> and I had to accept, accept the various theories in, in, in geometry and them kind of things. I can't understand it, but I have to accept it. I don't know how plane fly, but I sit down in plane. And I tell my relatives over on the other side that I'm coming. And I expect pilot to lift me off of Palisades airport and land me where I am going. I can't understand, but I tell them I'm coming. I can't understand the love of God, but I accept the love of God. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. I can't understand it. Angels can't understand it either, but I accept it. And the angels... It baffles them. They seek to understand how God could reach and love. Lord, it's not some goody goody people, you know. They're not they're not nice people. They're awful people. And even after you die for them, they're going backslide. They're going to give you trouble. And God says, I know all of that, but I'm still going down there. I'm still going love there. God, they're going, they're going to spit in your face.
your face. I'm just speaking as a man, friend. Nothing in Bible names, all right? So, but just understand with me, a reasoning. God, those Roman soldiers were spit in your face, and they didn't have toothpaste and mouthwash them time. They're going to punch nails in your hand. And even after you feed them, they're going to turn around and leave you. And God said, I'm still going. I'm still going to love them. I'm still going to die for them. And even after they call them, you call them Lord. And pastor tries so hard to preach the word and great ministers and choir sing. We still don't appreciate it and we're gone. And the angels look on. And they wonder on two fronts. They wonder at the love of God. And they wonder too. As they see our reaction. My reaction. To the love of God. They wonder if I don't understand. Hallelujah. They wonder if Errol don't really understand. What God is doing. And has done for him. And the angels. Wonder at the lack of appreciation that I show for the love of God. And the angels look on in wonderment at how easily I am sidetracked, at how easily I lose focus. So you have a big sign focus on Jesus, and the word Jesus is big and bold. But right here, standing, looking on it. If God don't direct my mind, I'm looking and focus on Jesus. And my mind is on my dinner this evening. And my mind is on something else. Hallelujah. And the angels wonder at how fickle mankind is. At how easily dissuaded and sidetracked we can become. And the angels wonder how God can still love them. Oh, God can still forgive them. Oh, God can still restore. And we say he's a God of a second chance, but brother, he's more than a God of second chance. Some of us get three chance and four chance and five chances. And we exploit the love of God. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the angels look on. And wonder at how we can sell out something so expensive for something so cheap. The little vanities and the frivolities of the world. The little fashions and the styles out there. <laughs> Help me today, Jesus. Help me today, Jesus. And the angels wonder if we don't realize what we have. If we don't realize that we have been transported into heavenly places. If the angels, the angels wonder. If we don't understand, hallelujah, that we are but strangers and pilgrims here. And the angels inquire and the angels wonder at how we become so attached to this world that is sinking. This world that is crashing. As we sit, stand here, this world is crashing around us. The economic systems of this world is crashing right before our eyes. Uh, and we hold on to it. Uh, and we hold on to these values. Uh, and we hold on to these things for dear life. Uh, at the expense of our souls. But uh, well, let me lose myself. And find it, Lord, indeed. The angels inquire. They would seek to understand. Brothers and sisters, let's spend a little time in looking into the love of God. If angels for whom the Lord did not die, angels are not redeemed. But we are redeemed. If angels can appreciate the love sacrifice of Almighty God. How much more? How much more you and I? 
I want us to understand, brothers and sisters, that the trick of the enemy is to put our values, make us put our values, our priorities on some things that are fading and decaying right before our very eyes, starting with the man in the mirror. Starting with what you see when you stand before your wonderful mirror. Vanity of vanities. Vanity of vanities. Look here. See them gray hairs? I didn't always have them. If you're close enough, see some wrinkles in my face? I didn't always have them. One time I wasn't so... That's why my wife said yes when I asked her. <laughs> but right before my eyes and her eyes and your eyes, this old temple is going back, falling apart. But we love it so much. We cherish it so much. We hold on to it so much. We dress it up so much. More money is spent on beautification than a whole heap of other important things. Billions of dollars spent on the cosmetic industry. Pretty hair, pretty eye, pretty mouth, pretty nose. And it is going, going, and will be gone. And the angels look on and wonder. How we so foolish. How even apostolic people get so foolish sometimes. And you know, I, I am speaking very respectfully here. Because I, I value my brothers and sisters. But we, we have to just talk the thing like how it's supposed to talk. We have, by and large, allowed this world... To transform our thinking. Instead of being transformed by the, 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 the precepts and principles of our Lord. We have allowed this whole devilish world. To so absorb our minds. To so take up our, our attention. That we kill out ourselves. Hallelujah. We sacrifice time, energy. Going after it. And it shrinks away, it shrinks away. No matter how a man tries, he will never get this whole world. If I gain the world, but not the Savior. My life isn't even worth living for one day. Not even one day. And the angels look on. And they desire to understand. And they desire to understand. Can you understand God's love? Can you understand why you are sitting in an apostolic church today? Maybe there are some of us here who you are the only one in your family that's baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. And maybe some of your brothers and sisters heard the same thing and they don't have no use for it today. Why you? What pre-qualifications did you bring to be sitting in Pentab today? What pre-qualifications did I have to be holding this microphone? Absolutely none. The love of God. The grace of God. Can you start to just give God thanks? Can you start to just look back? You see, friend, without a sense of history... A people will not value where they are now or where they will be in the future. A people history cannot value where they are now. So if we stop teaching history in our schools, our children will not appreciate the sacrifices of our fathers and mothers and where we're coming from. But it's an acknowledgement of our history, of our past, good or bad. That makes us appreciate where we are now. Hallelujah. And if truth be told, our history wasn't too pretty. 
Our history wasn't too nice. <laughs> Our history wasn't pleasant. Hallelujah. Our history, some of it, uh, although we give our testimonies, uh, we wouldn't want some people to know some of the things we were involved in. We wouldn't want some people to know, hallelujah, one of some of the things that came out of our mouth. And some of the things we did in secret. But God knows our history. And we know our history. And everybody has a story. And everybody has a right to praise God. Because you can look back where you're coming from. You can't understand what transported you to be here today. You can't understand what took those things out of your life. And, and some of the things, if truth be told, we remember them sometimes. But with, with disgust, we don't even want to think about them. Hallelujah. Because God has revolutionized our lives. God has totally transformed us. Hallelujah. Look who you're sitting beside today. Look who I am sitting beside today. Sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. It didn't have to be so, brothers and sisters. It's not because of the school you went to. It's not because of the family you came out of. It is the blood of the Lord Jesus. It is the love of God. Hallelujah. It is the love of God. We can't talk about the love of God too much. Oh, love that will not let me go. Hallelujah. It holds me even when I, I let go. <laughs> oh, it holds me if truth be told. I feel God so many times, but God love hold me. God love hold me. God love hold me. And the angels inquire. And the angels are, I can't understand. God, why you don't let him go? He has done enough that you let him go now. But God said, I'm holding him still. I'm still holding him. I'm still holding him. God's still holding you. You've been through a whole heap. I maybe feel like myself fail God so many times. But God still holds you. And God still call you son. And God still love you. And God still embrace you. And God still wrap you up in his arms of love. And call you son. And call you daughters. I love him today. I want to understand it Lord. I want to appreciate it. I want to love you more. I want to give you my everything. appear into it how could God give man so many chances God we, we know that you love your whole personality your whole persona is love for God is love so God we will understand if they make one mistake and you, you give them a second chance but God you know see how many times they have failed you, you don't see how lackadaisical they are in their approach to holiness you don't see how the poor pastor have to be pumping sometimes and encouraging and, and preaching his heart out and various ones have to be just pushing us and jack us push us and jack us up because if you move the catch it's gone me gone right back and the angels wonder when will it be that these people will start to understand the love of God and appreciate God, hallelujah, and don't just come with, with empty noise, but from the depths of my heart, from the innermost being, from the innermost recesses of my heart, I want to love you, Lord. I want to glorify you. I don't care if everybody else backslide, but I am going to worship God. I am going to love Jesus. I am going to serve Jesus. I don't care if my wife or my family leaves me. My mind is made up to serve Jesus. It absorbs absorbs my entire life it absorbs my entire future I don't care what this world says I don't care what they do I am going to love Jesus I have made my choice God has enabled me not me but God you see God not taking anything from us that he didn't give us in the first place so when we say I have made my choice is God help me to make the choice 
will accept nothing from any of us that he didn't give us in the first place. We don't have anything to offer God. So if you have a mind to serve God today, God put it there. Don't give ourselves the credit. God put it there. And everything must redound to the glory of God. Everything must come back to God. If you had a $10 or a, or a, a farden to put in the offering plate, it's God money. If you had any strength to come here, any desire to serve God, is God put it there. It's not because you are good. It's not because you read your Bible. It's not because you fast and pray more than everybody else. It is God inspiring you. It is God helping you. If you still have a desire to serve God, it is God. 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 It is God, friends. So Lord, I want to love you more. I want to honor you. I want to please you. I want to be real. I want to be sincere. Uh, I, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I, I don't want to be a pretender. I don't want to be an actor and a performer in God's house. I want God to see the sincerity of my heart. I want what I do to be motivated by love for God and love for God's people. Hallelujah. I want that to be the driving force of all that I do, all that I say. Not how I can preach or sing or perform. Performer is not going to heaven. His worship is going to heaven. I want to give and give. Let me tell you, I wrote this down sometime. It's only tired people going to heaven. It's only tired people going to heaven. So people who lay back and, 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 and don't want to do nothing for God. Very lackadaisical and come to church and oh, thank God Pentab is a big place and you know, I, I, I can slink away and get that. Believe me, I don't know nothing about nobody. So I'm just, I just talking. So please understand. I can get lost in the crowd. And some can push the fire and, and push the, 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 the car. But you know, scotch. Thank God I'm one of them. One of them. But what am I doing to hear God say well done? If I'm not doing something, it's illogical to expect to hear well done. Don't mean something was done. Yeah. Don't mean effort was made. Lazy people not going to heaven. It's tired people ending up. And I always say in my own little simplistic way, when we reach the pearly gates, we say, Whew. Hallelujah, I made it. When you look back where you're coming from, at the struggles and the difficulties, when you look back at the hell that you have gone through, when you look back at the torment and the tribulations of the days without food sometimes, hallelujah, of the days of sacrifice, hallelujah, of the days, hallelujah, when everybody laughs at you and thought that you're a fool. And the angels are looking on. And God is looking on. And God say, well done. I kept a record of it. And my record is perfect. I watch you. I watch you while you were going through your turns and your uphills. And sometimes, uh, if truth be told, you were lonely and you felt discouraged. Sometimes we feel discouraged. I am not one of them preachers that say, I have never been discouraged. Sometimes you feel discouraged. But I'm not turning back. wonder what this in Pentecost and I wonder at the approach and the value placed upon people's souls and God knows I feel kind of discouraged sometimes really. And part of the reason I accepted pastor's invitation to come here this morning is to ask you to pray for us. 
but sometimes this road get kind of get lonely and i'm not just talking about myself you have your individual predicament too you have your dark corners too you have your hours of loneliness too we're not even a good pastor can help you you have your discouraging times sometimes too your lonely hours You have it. You've been there. You've been through some valleys. You've been through some situations. That is only God keep your sanity. People is only God keep our sanity. It's true or it's not true. Hallelujah. Well, you know. When all of this is finished, my father was an old Pentecostal preacher, you know, and he used to say, God have a Friday evening. God have a payday. God has a payday. God has a Friday evening when he will pay. Hallelujah. And nobody can jiggle his books. And falsify his accounts. He has an accurate record. And maybe the person sitting beside you don't know. Some of the valleys that you have been through. And they just see you. And assume that you had to be in church today. Dressed in your nice dress and in your nice suit. God bless you for them. But if we could understand. What some people went through to be sitting down in Pentab this afternoon. Is only God and themselves know. Is only you and God know. But guess what happened? God have a Friday evening too. And this world may take its toll of misery and pain. But when God's payday comes, when God's mountain comes, when God's final summary, summation and analysis, when God opens his book, they'll be coming from the north, they'll be coming from the south, they'll be coming from the east, from the west. And some of who will end up in heaven, if we could be surprised in heaven, we would be surprised too. Because we never believed, Pastor, that they would have make it. But you can't match the grace of God. We would have written them off a long time. I keep telling the folks, I say, if, if the Lord gave me the authority to fill people with the Holy Ghost, some people who sit down on choir and sit down at church and preaching today, me write them off. I would have written them off a long time ago. I would tell the Lord, them can't make it, Lord. You're wasting time on them. But God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God. You and I have no right to write off anybody. And when God is finished and ready and he brings together the redeemed that is again going to be another situation where the angels I believe in my simplistic way are going to inquire. And they're going to say Lord where these come from? Where these come from? We didn't expect to see Laka some of them in heaven. You don't know the term, friends. Laka. Like off. 
are similar to. But in Jamaican parlance, and there's nothing like patwa. When I say laka, it, it supersedes what like, like could be. And the angels will say, Lord. Of course, the angels, I don't know what kind of language. But translated in Jamaican language, Lord, well, laka this I want to come from. Lord, you don't remember when he was smoking the spliff until it burned him finger. What him doing up here? What you doing up here? What, what they're all doing up here? Where them come from? Where them come from? We are accustomed to the cherubims and the seraphims and the angels, the, the, the holy beings of heaven. And we're singing hallelujah. We're having a good time. But suddenly we see an infusion of some strange people. I heard some of them short, some of them overweight, some of them underweight, some of them black, some brown, some are freckles, some have education. Most of them don't have no education. Most of who end up in heaven not going to have PhDs. Nothing against PhDs. Most of who end up in heaven, if I know anything about the apostolic church, especially in this country, not going to have a secondary education. But God going to save them. And a large amount of them will be womanizers, erstwhile womanizers, and ganja smokers and bad word cursers. And they will wander again. Lord, we wandered in the first place what you were doing to go down there. But here is the greater wonderment now. Where they coming from? How them come in? How them pass Peter at the gate? Hallelujah. <laughs> How you pass Peter at the gate? And the Lord will say, These are they. 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 These angels you're wondering, you never know what I was doing on earth. Hallelujah. You couldn't understand what I was doing on earth. But these are they. Hallelujah. These are they. These are they. Hallelujah. That came out. Came through. Came through the fire. They didn't burn in the fire. They didn't burn up. They didn't drown in the fire. They didn't live in the waters. But they came through. And I put in them beside me. And I, and I parade in them beside me. And the angels will fold their hands. When we start to sing in heaven, you see, friends. When we start to sing redemption story in. Oh, oh, hola, hola. I, I like to sing. But I wish I could sing like some of them people. I wish I could sing like some of these people. Yeah. I, I wish I could sing like some of these people. Yeah. And sometimes you hear these um, records and CDs. You wish, not that the truth. You wish you, could, you had a voice like them. But guess what happened? Plenty of us. Pastor wouldn't put, them on, put us on the choir. Because our voice sound like coarse salt in the truth. We, we, don't, we don't sound too good. So as much as pastor cares for us, him not going to send us to, to Fort Lauderdale. So even if we have the visa and we have the money, we're not going to go because we're not singing too well. If truth be told, he's not going to put us up here. And if him, if him going to make we sing and him pass the thing down to us, him tell the man, can I turn it down? Because they must sound so good. But when we get to heaven and start to sing redemption and start to sing redemption story, none of you sing like that right now. I don't care how good you can sing. When I get to heaven and start to sing redemption story, angels fold their wings. And the mouth wide open. And they wonder. We never heard singing like this. Because we're singing. Hallelujah. 
we sing in from a, a, a perception, a, 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 a depth, hallelujah, that angels have never been. We're telling a story that angels don't know. And again, they will wonder and they will desire to look into it. Brothers and sisters, let us live for God. Let us love one another and love God. Let's be sincere. It will be worth it all. I don't care what is happening now, Pentab. It is, will be worth it all. You and I know some people who have gone on before. They went through a whole heap. God help them. God will help us too. I don't care what you're going through. No job, no money, nowhere to live. But God has predestinated you to be saved. If you don't accept that, you'll never be saved. The only place I see my, my name written in my Bible is when I write the royal holiness at the front. But I know when God says he loves you. For God so loved the world. That includes me. That includes me. It includes you. And if angels even can't understand it, friends, I can't understand it either. But I thank God for his love. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. I love you. I adore you. I bow down before you. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. I appreciate your sacrifice. I appreciate your love. Angels are excited. I want to get excited too. I want to get involved too. I appreciate you. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Oh, if there's only one song. We're well, finished now, don't worry. I can sing. When in his beauty, I see the great king. Let, let me tell you a little something. You see a whole part of these new songs? Pastor, I don't know them. And I try to look on the lips of the younger people when they're singing it. And I try to catch it. And sometimes I go up there go try to sing it. And I kind of make mistake with it. And thank God my wife knows it and she jump up and she, she helped me with it. But if there is only one song I can sing. When in his beauty I see the great king. This shall my song in eternity be. Oh. I'm not talking about nobody else. No, you know. Oh. What a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad. You glad, friends? Anybody in here glad that Jesus loves you? Anybody in here? <laughs> Anybody in here glad? Really glad? Really, 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 really glad? Really glad that Jesus loves you? I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Yes, I am so glad that Jesus, Jesus, even me. Sing that again. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. sing that a couple more times and I pass over to pastor. The word so is in my thinking the most overburdened word in the English language. For God so loved the world. What does that mean? 
Oh, does that quantify God's love? I am so glad. How glad are you? What we mean when we say, I am so glad? I mean, I'm glad from the depths of my heart. I mean, I, I, I thank you from the depths of my heart. Let's sing it with that impression. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus Sometimes we quickly forget what we have heard. And I know that when the word is preached, that the devil sends his emissaries and he says, Go and snatch that word before it germinates and they believe that Jesus loves them. Go for that word before it begins to get roots and they believe that Jesus loves them. I want us to remember that the angels desire to look into the love of God. It amazes them. But the second part, they are amazed at my poor response. They are amazed at my excuses. They are amazed how easily I say, I can't come. I can't give. I can't go. But yet, I sing songs. I will give you all. Oh, how I love Jesus. But as a little pressure is applied, I can't go to Nannyville. I can't go. But Jesus, I will give you all except Nannyville. Angels desire to look into that too. Let's not be careless hearers or forgetful hearers. How many appreciate the love of God for you? Brethren, we can't forget this. We can't forget this. I want to share something with you. I want to share something with you for five minutes. Could we just stop the live stream for a little? Let's just cut the live stream for a little. I feel that I need to do this. Are we off now? Are we off now, brethren?